if you press equal to rand open brackets and close brackets and you press enter you can generate random text within your microsoft word document you can customize this further by putting in the number of paragraphs and sentences you want press equal to and then put in the formula again rand open brackets now put in the number of paragraphs let's put three comma and then three sentences now close brackets and press enter and there you go it's created three paragraphs that have three sentences each you can also use this formula to generate random text if you press the dash sign or the minus sign three times and then you press enter it should create a solid single line if you now press an underscore three times and then you press enter it should create a bold single line if you press the equal to sign three times and then you press enter it should create a double line if you press the star sign three times and then you press enter it should create a dotted line if you press the pound sign or the hashtag sign three times and then press enter it should create a triple line and then finally if you press the tilde sign three times and then you press enter it should create a zigzag line just like this you can create bullet points using keyboard shortcuts if you press the star sign and then you press tab it should create a bullet point just like this you can also use this for other types of bullet points for instance one dot tab it should create a numbered bullet point here's another example and you can also create ones with a greater two sign as well and finally you can create one using a picture so let's go ahead and insert a picture we're going to select one of the stock images we're going to go ahead and select this one now press insert now we're going to simply resize this picture so that it's the size of a bullet point and now all you need to do is press on the side of it and once the cursor is selected on the side now i want you to press tab and then start typing if you press the plus sign then the minus sign then plus again then minus and then plus and then you press enter it should create a table with two columns you can now go ahead and select the last cell and now press tab and it should create another row within your table very quickly instead of pressing the minus sign in between the pluses you can also just simply use space again we can press tab to increase the number of rows you can also use the plus sign combined with the tab and then plus again and then tab as many times as you want then plus and then another plus sign and then you press enter there you go that should create a table as well and this time around we've chosen to create a table with three columns and once again you can go to the last column and then press tab and it should create another row you can also add more rows and columns simply by hovering over the table and then you should see a plus sign for the rows and we can do the same thing when we're in the columns you can use formulas in Microsoft Word tables. All you need to do is press the control and then F9. It should open up these brackets. Now you need to put in this formula equal to sum open brackets. And now because we're trying to sum above, we're going to simply type in the text above and we're going to close the bracket. And now we're going to press F9. That's now created a sum for the four values above it. We can do the same thing in the rows. So we're going to go ahead and press control nine. It should open up these brackets. Now we're going to type in equal to sum open brackets. And because these values are to the left of the formula, we're going to simply type in the text left. Now we're going to close the brackets and press F nine. And that's now summed up these three values on the left hand side. You can do the same thing with averages, counts, max and min as well. You can press the Alt key and then the End key to move the cursor from the first cell to the last cell within the table. You can now press Alt and then Home to take you back to the first column. You can press the Alt key and then Page Down to take you to the last row. And then you can press Alt and then Page Up to take you to the very first row. Select your text and now press Control, Shift and then W. It should unline all of the words within your text, but not the spaces in between. If you press Control Shift and then D, it should double underline 
all of the words within your paragraph. If you press Ctrl and then D, it should open up the font dialog box. You can make lots of changes to your text just by using this. If you press the Ctrl Shift and then the greater to sign, it should increase the size of your text. And then if you press Ctrl Shift and then the less than sign, it should reduce the size of your text by two. If you press Ctrl and then the square brackets, it should increase the size of your text by one increment at a time. If you now press the other square bracket by control and then square brackets, it should reduce the size by one increment. You can press control and then enter to create a page break very quickly within your Word document. You can press the control M key in order to indent a paragraph. And to reverse that, you simply press control shift and then M. You can press control and T to create a hanging indentation just like this. And once again, if you press control shift and then T, it will reduce that indentation back to normal. You can center the paragraph by pressing Ctrl E. You can left align it by pressing Ctrl L. You can right align it by pressing Ctrl R. And you can justify it by Ctrl J. If you press Ctrl and 2, it's going to set double spacing within the paragraph. And then if you press Ctrl and 1, it's going to do a single spacing. And if you press Ctrl 5, it's going to do 1.5 spacing in between the lines in the paragraph. If you need to change the formatting of these three headings, rather than doing it individually, for instance, highlighting them and then changing the format, you can actually go into the Home tab and now go all the way to the right hand side and click on Select. In the drop down, I want you to select this option, Select All Text with Similar Formatting. And as you can see, it's now highlighted all of the headings with a similar sort of format. Now you can simply go ahead and reformat these. If you copy anything in your Microsoft Word document, so let's say, for instance, we copy this table. Now we go ahead and copy this text. And now we go ahead and copy this picture. If you now go into the home menu and you go into the clipboard and you click on this arrow, you should see all three of those things appear within the clipboard on the left hand side. You can now go ahead and paste these back into the document as many times as you want. So for instance, if you wanted to create this picture of the bus again, you simply go in here and you and you simply click on the picture. And as you can see, it's now created that again. We can do the same thing with the table and, and the text. But here's the cool part. You can actually now go into your other Microsoft applications. If you go into PowerPoint, again, go into Home and click on the clipboard arrow. As you can see, you can access all those three items within PowerPoint and you can simply paste those in. You can do the same thing with Excel. I'm going to paste those in here. And you can do the same thing in your Microsoft Outlook emails. So you go into message and then you're going to go into the clipboard and now click on the arrow. And as you can see, you still got those three options. We're going to go ahead and paste the table, paste the text, and then finally paste the picture. And here's a bonus tip. If you're on a Windows laptop, you can press the Windows key and then V, and that should open up a clipboard which retains a history of everything you've copied. And you can use that as well to select and paste. You can add custom watermarks to your Word document. All you need to do is click on Design. Now go into Watermark. And in the drop down, you want to add Custom Watermark. And here you're going to select Picture Watermark. Now we're going to select a picture from your PC. I'm going to select this logo and press insert. That's created a picture watermark within your Word document. This should be on every single page of your document as well. You can add line numbers to your Word document by simply going into Layout and now clicking on the Line Numbers drop down. And now you can select from a number of options. So I'm going to select Continuous. And as you can see, every single line now has a corresponding line number associated to that. And this will continue on every single page of your Word document. This can be quite useful when you're sharing documents with others and you want to refer to a specific line number within your document. If you've got multiple pages in your Word document and you want to change some of the pages to a different orientation, i.e. to landscape, all you need to do is simply select on top of the page that you want to change into a landscape. Now I want you to go into the layout tab. I want you to click in the drop down for breaks and I want you to click on next page. Once you've done that, now I want you to go to the page after the one that you want to change the orientation for, which is this one. And we're going to do the same thing. 
So we're going to go into layout, breaks, and then next page. Once you've done that, it should create a separation. And as you can see, it's now changed the orientation of this page in the middle, whereas all the other pages above and below it are still in portrait mode. In order to create dynamic headers in Microsoft Word, first, I want you to make sure that the title of each page has been marked as heading one. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. You can now go ahead and double click in the header section. It should open up this menu. And once you're in the header and footer menu, I want you to go into document info and then click on field. And now within this menu, I want you to scroll all the way down until you see style ref. And then I want you to go down this list and select heading one. And now we're going to press OK. As you can see, that is now dynamically picked up the heading from the page. And now we're going to click out of this. And now we're going to go down to the second page. As you can see, that's now called chapter two. And then finally, you can see that that's called chapter three. And if I go ahead and change this and double click back into the header, it will dynamically change the header of that page. You can also add page numbers or a second header by simply going into the header and footer menu at the top and then clicking on insert alignment tab. And this time around, we're going to click right and then press OK. Once it's done that, it should take it to the right hand side of the page. Now we can go back into page number and we're going to select current position. And then you can select any one of these formats that you want. I'm going to go ahead and select page one and then you can double click out of this. And as you can see, you've now got two headers. If you want to create a line on the left hand side of your page, all you need to do is click into the home menu. And now on the right hand side, click on the borders selection and then go all the way down and click borders and shading. Within this section, you want to click on borders and now you can select a whole host of things, including a box shadow and a 3D. We're going to select custom. You can also go ahead and change the style. You can change the color and you can change the width. You can use a preview window on the right hand side to be able to add the borders depending on what you need. Or you can use these menu options on the left and at the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and select the left and now we're going to go ahead and click OK. So now if we go ahead and enter text within the paragraph, you can see from the start to the finish of the paragraph, it's now created this line. If you want the line on the left hand side to be from the start of the page to the end of the page, regardless of the paragraph, you can head back into the same menu, click on borders and shading. But this time around, click on page border. Again, you've got all the same options. We're going to go ahead and click on custom. We can even go ahead and change the design and then we can and then we can change the color as well if we want to. And now we're going to go ahead and click left alignment. And as you can see, it's going to apply this to the whole document. And that's what we want. You can obviously change this to the section first page only, but we're going to keep it to the whole document. You can also click on the options and you can customize it further, but we're going to keep it as is for now. And then we're going to click OK. And as you can see, it's now created this line from the start to the finish of the whole page. You can also create lines in between columns of text. So if we go ahead and select this text, I want you to go into layout. Now go into the columns drop down and now click on more columns. In this window, I'm going to go ahead and select three. And then now I'm going to select line between and check this and then click OK. And as you can see, it's now created these three columns with a line in between. If you've got a table like this in Microsoft Word and you want to be able to add referencing to that table or serial numbers, rather than adding them one by one, all you need to do is highlight all the cells that you need the reference for, go into the Home tab and now click on the bullet points and in the drop down, you can select any one of these and I'm going to go ahead and select this one. And as you can see, it's automatically generated all the numbers for each row. If I go ahead and add a row to this table, as you can see, it's now dynamically updated all the numbers to be in line with the number of rows. And the same thing happens when I go ahead and delete rows. There you go. If you've got a number like this in Microsoft Word, you can convert this number into text, 
simply by typing in this formula. Highlight the number, now press Ctrl F9 on your keyboard, now press equals to, now go to the end of the number, and I want you to press backspace, star, and now type in card text, and now press F9. As you can see, it's now converted the number into the text. If you don't want this text to be unlined automatically, when you've either misspelled or you're typing your document into a different language, then all you need to do is go into File, then go into Options, and now go into Proofing, and now scroll all the way down until you see this menu, and then you can click on Hide Spelling Errors in this document, and Hide the Grammar Errors in this document only. So you can go ahead and click this, and as you can see, that has now disappeared, and even when you send this document onto somebody else, you won't be able to see that underlining. If you press down Alt on your keyboard and then drag through your mouse, you can select text vertically in Microsoft Word. And once it's selected, you can go ahead and change its format or anything else you want to do with that text. In order to add internal navigation in your Microsoft Word document, all you need to do is click on the titles of the page and then change it into a heading one. I need you to select the chapter one within your navigation text right click that and then we're going to add a link we're going to select place in this document and we're going to select chapter one and then press ok we're going to do the same thing for chapter two and now when you press control and then click on the word it should automatically navigate you to that particular page so let's go ahead and do that for chapter two and there you go if you have to type in long names for certain things over and over again you can actually highlight those and then create a shortcut key for that so we're going to go into file go into options go into proofing now go into autocorrect options in this menu we're going to click on autocorrect and now within the menu here we're going to simply click on that and replace it with any keyboard shortcut that we want so i'm going to put in ccf and i'm going to click on ok and now when i go ahead and press ccf and press enter is going to automatically generate that word for me if you want to turn off the order correct feature within microsoft word for instance when i press the minus sign three times and then press enter it creates a line if i want word to stop doing that automatically all i need to do is click on this icon on the left hand side click in the drop down and now select stop automatically creating border line so now when you go ahead and do that it shouldn't create that line again Obviously, you might want to turn this feature back on. So the way you do that is by going into File, going into Options, now going to Proofing, now going to Autocorrect Options, and now click on Auto Format as you type. And now we're going to check the option that says Borderline, and we're going to press OK. And now if we go ahead and do that again, as you can see, we can now automatically create those lines using keyboard shortcuts in Microsoft Word. If you have a table like this in your Microsoft Word document and you try and paste it into your Excel, Sometimes what happens is that it pastes the information on multiple cells for the same row. You obviously don't want this to happen, so here's a quick way to fix that. Select your table in Microsoft Word, and then I want you to go ahead and press Replace. In this menu, I want you to press More, and now go down and click on Special. Once you do that, I want you to select Paragraph Mark. And then finally, we need to go into the Replace With, and then just simply leave it as blank, and then Replace All. And now we're going to go ahead and press no and then close this document. And as you can see, it's now formatted this a little bit better. It's removed all the paragraph spacing. Now we're going to copy this into Excel. And as you can see, all the information is contained within the same cell within the row.